by the way, expectation um, is one of the most powerful habits, right? And it's, unfortunately, one of the things I like to say, this is like a heavy thought, but one of the worst viruses human beings have um, <clears throat> manifested is the expectation of um, convenience, for example, right? That leads to a lot of things speeding up, right? And frustration and stuff. But better than that, there are all sorts. So I thought maybe I had the idea this morning that I should either never teach any poses and just talk and torture you all, okay? <laughs> that would be one possible new habit. Perhaps a better or worse habit would be <clears throat> at least one third of every class I sing the instructions because <laughs> I'm a horrifically bad singer, right? So <clears throat> that could be another change of habit for this class. Um, you know, I'm open if anyone's got a change of habit that this class, you know, we all fall into patterns. And remember, <clears throat> I think one of the, this is, sorry to start so abstract the new year, but of course that's what I do, right? Because I'm always trying to travel between the ocean and the drop in the ocean and the drop in the ocean to the, to the ocean, right? Because I want to believe that if human beings can realize the space they live in, we'll get better at the bigger spaces. Right. And that's like an overly simplified <laughs> motivation of mind body solutions. Right. So, <clears throat> this idea of, like, for example, I heard something that irritated me, which it's supposed to not irritate me. Right. But there was some survey in the New York Times about, I only got turned this word of mouth. Um, do you know? what are the best things you can do for the planet or for the earth? And it was a quiz. And the things that you might not, um, or you might think are really important, you know, the two biggest ones are eat less meat and um, take long, less longer flights, you know, on airlines, right? That those are the two. And the problem with that analysis is that, yeah, I struggle to recycle every little thing that I can and, the problem with thinking about that, our problem on the earth this way, in terms of practical solutions, like no matter how many plastic bags I re-rinse, it's not going to make a dent because Target, which is a store here, my son used to you work behind the deli, uses 500 plastic bags a day, right? So I save one or two or 50 or 60 over the year. And if you think about the problem in terms of objective issues, right? <clears throat> we're not gonna make a dent. And that type of analysis pisses me off because it completely misses what's fundamentally important. And that is human beings have to change something that's not very sexy. They have to change their habits, right? And habits aren't sexy. They're kind of boring right? And, and they have this really important function. Habits create grounding, right? Good or bad habits. If you do things over and over the same way, right? This is part of why I think as we age, we often tend to get more rigid, right? Is that habits are what allow the grounding energy for you to stay, um, <clears throat> your mind to stay more steady, and so unfortunately, so much of the problems that we all have are habit driven. So you're supposed to have like new resolutions right now. And I hate that, you know, as if it's as simple to create a new habit as to just tell yourself you're going to do it. And the idea that somehow the great door opener or door closer of habits comes from the intensity of my will. Right, damn it, I'm going to do it. That can work sometimes. I don't know if anyone else has ever made resolutions that you haven't called through on. Has anybody done that? Right? I hope you like admit to that. 
this isn't the magic of habit, right? Habits don't happen unless they travel through the body, right? And there's like, so there's a, there's an old um, Buddhist test of a good habit. Do it for a hundred days straight. And then if it fades off after a hundred days, it's not a good habit. <laughs> no matter how good you thought it was, right? Or they say 21 days or this or that, right? And so where this idea of habit intersects the experience of disability, and I might want to have a YTD about this. I don't know about you, but I form habits in order to deal with the complexity of my disability and my situation. And I do often have a hard time changing them, right? That, that because I kind of figured out how I can manage everything. So I think on top of habits being incredibly hard i think that people that manage some sort of condition or trauma loss or disability or whatever i don't know about you but any change in my body that since an imprint from when i was 13 it probably means something's going bad or going wrong i don't know if you've had that yet like because anytime things change with my body the, the little boy in me goes oh no this must be worse right and i have to work through that habit right because that imprint is so deep in my nervous system right so when i say habits i mean not just like my tendency to criticize myself which is i'm sure we all have that habit right to not think you're quite good enough for something that there's there's a common habit that is just a habit it's not the truth it's a habit of how you process uncertainty Right, so it's a habit, it's not a truth. And so there's a lot of things like that. So one of the, and, and I, I, lay, I have to change, I think, a series of habits about how I live with what I carry, right? Um, and I wanna let you know that we're all always in this process of, we're all some combination of old and new forming habits. Right, that that's, that's what we are, right? And <clears throat> I think we don't take seriously the level at which a true habit has to transform. So if some of you have figured out how to practice on your own, right? This is one of the places that, that are one of the hardest habits to form, right? Self-practice. And once you do, you've learned something very valuable. But what's hard about it is even though I've learned about how to keep practicing, it doesn't always translate to all the aspects of my life. Except if I realize what I've realized when I've realized how to practice, right? And I sit with that, right? So just for a moment, don't resolve yourself or make a resolution about what you're gonna do. Allow that you have habits that although mental attachment makes them think they're rigid, makes you think they're rigid, they're not. So what gets underneath a habit? So someone that's been traumatized, for example, with, well, let's say with a trauma and then has PTSD or whatever, right? Their mind has a habit, let's, let's say they're hypervigilant or their mind has a habit of thinking they have to control the environment as much or somebody that always sees the glass half empty, right? I mean, that the orientation, you know, unless I try to pass on to people that I'm close to, it's like, you can always see what's wrong with any situation, right? That's easy. That's what minds are for, right? But what if you just try to assume more often than not to see what's best about what's happening? There's like a profound habit that without lying to yourself, don't make shit up. But where's your habit, right? Like, and especially with my health, I tend to think I have a habit of seeing things that are wrong. 
so there's there's something like I'm not going to resolve to be more optimistic about my health because, as you know, living with disability is tough. But I don't have to have the habit of seeing what's wrong first, right? What's the point of sensation that's below attachment, below your mind habits? So you think you're just centering when you start a yoga class. So like I've learned a lot, that not that I can always apply, but I've learned a lot from my yoga practice. I've been trying to convince and share with you how important and how fundamental the energy that's revealed in centering is. So just let, keep letting go for a second. Notice your exhale. There is a habit for the new year if you want to pay more attention to it. Your exhale. And I'm going to ground a little bit. I'm going to feel more. As I do this, I hope you can feel as you let yourself ground and you feel the lightness that happens when you do that. What if... In centering, one of the really important energies of centering is having more air in your head. Sounds funny, right? No, actually, let it be airy. Let there be space between the, the, the skin on your face and cheeks and your cheeks. What if you could realize space between the skin on your forehead and your forehead? Now, when you do that, you start to realize that's why we're trying to, how do you trying to get you to soften your eyes? If I can start feeling space here, as I often say, release the forehead skin towards the eyebrows, right? If I can start to see space there and how to relax around my temples, then take it a step further and feel the, that there could be space between the skin and my face and my face. And as I let that settle, I start to allow in what was always there, which is my feet on the foot pedals, my sitting bones. The energy that precedes my judgment precedes my mind habits. I typically don't feel all this as a habit when I'm trying to go through my day. That's, it wouldn't be a functional habit to be here all the time, but it's a good habit to touch. So as you sit here and center and maybe play, um, I got my hands on my desk. I'm trying to really get more grounding because I'm thinking and allowing that the space that gets underneath my habits was already accessible to me. It's not something I have to judge. Where does potential lie? Reside, I don't mean lie, like to be deceitful, deceitful. And in that space, these next few breaths, I'm gonna try to let my breath bring movement in life to where I know if I'm honest and truthful, my potential lies. Please, I hope you're out of your mind now, that you're actually including your body because your potential doesn't only resist in your mind. It exists in your body too. So I'm gonna introduce my breath to touch both. 
there's the end of the exhalation. And then the spark of the inhalation. The epic, the e epoch, very top. And then the down again. And this has been happening your entire life. It's been touching what you can see and can't, and can't see. The movement of your breath is one part of your breath. It sticks itself or conjoins with the other part of you. Keep allowing the space between your face and the skin on your face. Go inward enough to let your, in, your ear holes actually touch all the way through. Make there be congruence, both directions. Make sure your tongue stays in the lower palate. Aware of all this, choose to light the world with a slight lift of your chest. As you lift your chest, let the shoulder blades drop and the down drop. Find your sitting bones, rise up. Your day is going to pull you into habits. Ways that you limit the world, and you have to do that. Part of what makes you human, the great limiting. Let go of your day. Prepare your mind to do yoga. Good, and then release, take your sternum up towards your chin and your chin down over your sternum. Couple times during your day, do this, it's a good habit. Good, and then Raise your head up with closed eyes. I think it's a really good habit for human beings, actually. Um, I wish our US Congress would do this, right? I think it's a really good um, practice to spark your life energy up, lift your chest, and drop your chin in humility. Don't go to a belief system, right? Just pause with an activation up and the mind allowing the down, right? This is a good energy to touch, I believe. It's for you to figure out if you think so too. Raise your head up again. I'm remembered of an old time doc, an old doctor that retired that said every time before he went into a patient's room, he did this. This was his ritual to remind him that he was dealing with a human being. And in order to do that, he had to remind that he was a human being with a body. So he did this. 
I don't care what your, what your practice is. I don't care what your habit is. These are the good kinds of habits, all right? Movement's a good habit for sure. So, you know, but we start opening it up again. <clears throat> I decided not to sing a third of every class for your benefit, right? Right? But I'm thinking about initiating something that I used to do not in a weekly class. I don't know if I have the capability of it. But the habit of something I, I would often call um, lyrical name that tune, right? You may find yourself living in a shotgun shack. Anyone know that? It's the first line of a classic song from the rock and roll area, from the 80s, actually. Anybody know that song? You may find yourself, say say what it is, Angelique. I think it's Talking Heads. but Yes, it is, but which one? <laughs> um, uh, Once in a lifetime, and the um, great one. In, in a large automobile. Yeah, you, you may you find yourself life. behind the wheel of a large automobile. Let the water hold me down, that one. Exactly, that water one? flowing underground. So David Byrne is coming into the awareness that Although his mind does all this rattling around and has an existential, like whatever, the water was always flowing underground. Right? That there was always something else. And it's his mind habit that makes him forget, right? But the, the quintessential line of that sign is the same as it ever was. Same as it ever was, right? Your habits don't create things. They either reveal things or exclude things. Mostly they exclude things, right? And that's, you know, thank God. I can barely hold my awareness together, right? I, I need to exclude a whole bunch of my thoughts, right? So I'm happy about the exclusion. But it's fun to do in your yoga practice, try not to fall into ruts, like the one we're in right now where I want to introduce movement. So I'm joking about never letting any yoga happen in these classes, right? Because it's not that their habits just reveal different parts of the universe, right? Or they exclude different parts of the universe. That's all. They don't make them. Right? I don't want so. Anyone ever seen the Seinfeld where he has to wear a pirate shirt? And he says, I don't want to be a pirate. Anyone know this line, this that episode? I feel that about the whole environmental people want to reject what's happening to the earth. I don't want to think we're we're destroying the planet. I don't wanna. Okay. There's a dangerous habit. <laughs> Or a kid that crosses the street without looking both ways. That's a bad habit. That's got a short lifespan. Right? So again, we're just moving. Here's just one of the habits of introducing. Mental energy is not organic enough. This is why I think we all should go to Angelique's class. She's going to move us more. Right? She's going to... Her teaching is in a very wise way, is gonna err on the side of movement, not words, right? So I'm gonna bring one elbow down. So one elbow down, I'm putting it on the table, you can put it on your lap, right? But I'm gonna start twisting my spine. So just by placing my elbow, right? I make a choice, boom, right? Can I construct yoga from this position, right? What can I do? Right? What do I know about the habits that make yogic resonance? Right? Asana resonance. So I could tell you a whole bunch, but why don't you try a couple on your own? Right? <clears throat> there is no right and wrong thing. Right? There isn't 
a way better instruction than the other, right? I hope you can get that going down with your elbow and letting your spine come up probably is a good one, right? It's going to help. But then what? Damn, I can tell I don't have enough contact with my feet and sitting bones. So I'm going to go down. And I'm going to go up. There's a really good habit for a yoga pose. Good, and then release. Down and going up. Right? And I'm going to do it the other way. I'm trying to have habits that make yogic resonance. Right? There are a couple of them that are going to be pretty useful. Right? So I'm going to, like, ground my elbow. I'm going to rise, and I'm going to twist a little bit. But I don't... This isn't a big twist. We're, we're still in that realm of just introducing movement. Right? Good. The beginning part of your class, here's another good habit for your own yoga practice. Let the beginning part be a wake-up part. Right? Start waking up movement. So I'm doing it again. I'm going to make it even better this time. So what am I going to do this time? So one of the things I've been doing a lot of for a couple of years in this class, or however long I've been teaching it, right, is that I've been generally under the habit of teaching from the core outward to the outer edges, which is a pretty good habit in a yoga pose, right? Go from the center outward. But if you ever practice from the outside in, it's a good thing to like screw up your habits, right? I don't want to, I, I tend to gravitate to the center outward, especially because my body isn't as physically able as some of the, the poses demand. So working from the center outward makes me feel like I belong more, right? That I can do more. But what about learning how to reverse the direction just to see what it reveals? Right, so both hands are on the table now, and I'm just like going, huh? Instead of focusing, and it's hard for me to undo because I teach, especially this class, so much from the center outward. I do it over and over again. But what if I try to go in reverse direction? How would I go from the outside in without being greedy about the physical part of the poses? Meaning that, like, I, I crash into the limits of the pose too, real fast. How do I go from the outside in? All right. So part of what, what I try to introduce is that possibility when we're centered is I often will tell you to, but it's really hard to find the outside. With, without knowing where the midline is a little bit, you can't really go from the outside in, right? So in centering, I'll also go locate yourself in the room. But I'll do something to center it, right? But then I'll, I'll tell you to, like, be in more expansive space, right? Open up your nervous system to start to receive, right? So a couple of times I'll say, feel the emptiness in the room. Or maybe, if, you know, can you feel your skin in relationship to the air in the room? Or all these things are attempts, Right? If I try to start my yoga pose from outside, way outside of my body, it's going to end up violent, right? So you got to have some modicum of where you are in space, right? But so now, instead of going from your sitting bones to, rate, to go up through the top of your head, go through the top of your head first and hit down through your sitting bones. So I'm elongating my neck. And once I get that action, then I pivot and go down, right? So I'm trying to do things differently than what I usually do. Okay, so I'm gonna take my arm up over my head and I'm just gonna do that without doing too much yoga. And then as I elongate my fingertips or my hands, I'm going to use that activation to hit down through my sitting bones. I almost always teach you the other direction. So I'm trying to go from the tips of my fingers 
down to my sitting bones and then release. So I'm reversing direction, right? I'm trying to go, oh, and there's something that happens to me when I go from the outside in, something happens that's not bad. In fact, it's an improvement, right? If I'm forced to go from the sky, from air into earth, something is actually gained, right? So I take my arms wide. And instead of focusing on how I squeeze the muscle to the bone, right, on my upper arm, I'm gonna try to find the air underneath my arms first. What's on the side of my neck. So I collapse this space, I can feel it, right? So I'm trying to like, let everything touch me and then bring that towards the midline of my body. Hmm. It's interesting. I don't know about you. I'm getting thirsty. All right, something's going on here. So now usually I push on my knees and I go up, right? Well, now I'm going to lift my chest. All I'm doing is pragmatically changing direction. Then I'm going to ground my legs. So the lift of my chest, rather than coming from my base up, is now traveling from the lift down to the ground. Hmm. Okay, so I'm gonna try to open to a space above my head, right? I'm gonna try to lift, let that be the dangling string that leads to the lift of my chest. From there, I'm going to hit down with my shoulder blades. From there, I'm going to hit down with my sitting bones. Hit down through my feet. Good, and then release. Mm -hmm. So I'm, again, just trying to do all sorts of things. So when I had you, like, moving, I think, was it the weird time last week where I was talking about shadows moving across your midline? So was that last week? <laughs> that would have been another one from the outside in, right? Move it across your midline, right? So you're like taking connection out here and moving it through your midline. And again, so you're going, but what's funny is in order to reach outside, I have to go down through my spine, right? So I'm trying to like know that I have to do that on some level, but once, because I need some sort of centering, right? And then I'm gonna try to bring the energy through, down through me like I'm pulling on a pulley, right? And then do the same thing over here. So I hope, right? So I'm trying to bring the energy through my midline, right? So, so I'm up, I'm bringing from out here, from out here, I'm pulling through and down, I'm grounding, and then I'm lifting my chest and then release and go the other way. Again, I just go up without thinking as much. I'm pulling energy through. I'm grounding, and then I'm opening my midline, right? So is this miraculously different? No, right? But I'm thinking, damn it, I want freedom of air to come into the earth. I want the earth to sprout the plant up through the soil. Right, and then do it the other. So I'm trying to get that expansive energy to feed my base, my base to do the growing, but to include air. I typically, right, 
try to move from the earth outward in this class, right? Because I know it's so hard for us when we live with trauma and disability, it's harder for us to find the earth, right? So I'm gonna sit here and pause again. So I'm doing all sorts of tricks, right? So start thinking of your, instead of worrying about, oh, what pose should I do with, with this and then, when you start habiting, right? I'm doing this because I want uh, an immediate connection to my base. So I've got my forearms between my legs here, right? And I'm using connection to like feel how to receive, right? So it's so funny how traditional students think that you're reaching out into space in yoga poses, right? And it is kind of that way, but it's also not that way. You're trying to take this energy, grab air up here, bring it back into your core, grab energy up here, bring it back into your core, ground it. Lift your chest. More of the room now, more of a sense of air is in my grounding now because I reversed direction of my habit, right? So again, I'm going to go, I'm taking this in, right? I'm taking it in. I'm putting fuel on the fire. I'm blowing on the embers. Now, as I lift my chest, one huh, direction changes. I don't like practicing like this very often, just so you know. That's why I teach you mostly the other way, right? But it is the case, you hear me say things like, there's no such thing as a one-way street in yoga. Has anyone heard me say that? Right? <clears throat> that it's so place your hands on the table or on your legs. And right? if you go on your legs, right? So typically the habit instruction, right? That is the typical instruction when you place your hands is to press down, maybe through your index mount of your hand, right? Right, roll the upper arms the other way, but it's about pressing into the ground, right? And then drawing out, right? Okay, so I'm gonna try to figure out how to do that backwards. Okay, so instead of pushing down in, I'm gonna place my hands on my table without any asana discipline, okay? Then I'm going to start to open the skin on my palms and try to draw energy up. Now, this is what should be happening in your dog pose arms anyway. Right? You end up learning how to draw things up. But now we're starting with the draw up to increase the push down. Okay. So let me try to put this into words. So, and then really, so... I want the, instead of to start with the push to find the earth, down towards the earth, trying to just settle on the earth and start to draw up. As soon as I start drawing up, what I can see, and these are just words I'm trying to give, is that I want you to lengthen the inside of your wrist once you've drawn up, okay? So to actually, instead of starting from pushing into the earth, right? I want you to be drawing up to lengthen down. This is weird, isn't it? My words maybe are failing for you. I don't know. They're bizarre. Okay. So, and then release again. Again, I'm starting to activate my upper arms. I'm beginning to draw up as soon as I, from flaccid hands, I'm beginning to draw up. Once I get the draw up, I'm extending down. Okay, and then release. So let's, this is so, such a cool fucking, oh, such a bizarre instruction, right? 
Does anyone thumbs up if you have even a clue about what the hell I'm talking about? Okay. Okay. So check that out. Right. So this is how reversing habit in a practice starts to reveal like I'm having it happen right now to my practice where because I've reversed direction, I'm starting to see something else that I wouldn't have seen unless I practiced like this. Right. This idea that the way I go down can get informed by the way I'm drawing up. Now, this is a big thing to learn in a yoga pose. So it's not just down to go up. It's also up to go down. Right. It's just easier for us to see the down to go up. Okay. So now I'm, I'm beginning to draw up. I'm going to use that for lengthening down. So I've started to draw up on my arms. <clears throat> I got it, Bethany. And then, and then I'm, I'm drawing up and then I'm going to use that to go down. Okay. Here's what I'm experiencing. I don't know if you're experiencing this. When I get the, Remember, this is a drop in the ocean, and the drop in the ocean is the entire ocean in a drop, okay? I really think that's probably, Rumi put something to words there that we should really take seriously, right? When I go up and then draw down, does anyone feel a different activation in their sitting bones and down to their legs? Can you tell that? Okay, that was always there. That was, that's not created. That was always there, right? And so I obviously want both, right? If I'm doing asana. So I'm getting an insight here that's making me wonder about how it applies to other parts of my pose. Okay, so I have a harder time drawing up through my legs. So I'm going to try, though. I'm going to lean forward. I'm going to create some extra base. So can you tell I'm trying to show you how to practice, right? Different ways to make your practice full and entertaining. So in order to try to do this in my legs, right? I'm trying to figure out what it meant to put my hands on the table, right? Because I can't quite set my feet on the foot pedals like I can set my hands on the table, but you maybe can. Okay, so now I'm a little bit forward. So I'm grounded. I'm gonna try the rise of my chest, the down through my legs to find a rise through my legs, right? So what helps with me, I think, I don't know, I might be in the realm of visualization right now. I'm not sure, can't tell. <laughs> that I find that, and I think you're gonna find this true in other poses, is that the drop up, you gotta learn, to push down through the center midline of your limbs, right? So the draw up, so inhale, take your arms up, or one arm, I don't care, you know, right? Now, to take the energy above me and go down with it, good, and then release. I'm finding that the outer edges of my skin don't help me with that, right? So when I'm up and I need to go down, I can find where my skin is, but I have to learn to travel through the midline of my limbs to get it to go down. Right, and now I want to receive up. I'm going to lean forward. 
What do I have to do to receive from my feet? Now, some of you can like push better with your feet than I can or my sitting bones. Got to make sure I'm actually going down, right? All the way through my legs. I think I cheat a little bit. I think I find my sitting bones and don't make it to my legs before I start drying up. So I just caught myself, right? I'm going to figure something else out. I'm going to relax again. I'm going to try it. I'm going to come forward again and make sure that as I lift my chest up, I make sure I make it to the ground. Remember, so we're moving up to go down, not down to go up. Trying to learn something here. And when I'm learning, it's a good time to breathe. Good, and then release. Inhale up. So remember, I'm trying to pull the energy down, right? So I'm going to go up. As I, as I bring the sky down, I'm going to twist. I'm going to ground to make sure I stay centered on what just happened, right? Gonna do it again. Cause it's easy for my mind to narrow what happened, right? So my mind habits, so I'm gonna go down and bring it down. I'm gonna try to keep my mind empty and start to turn, right? Oh shit, you know, crap, I'm gonna do it again. Cause I can feel that I let go of up here. So I'm touching the air up here. I'm touching the sky. Can I keep that steady in my mind as I turn ground? Move, right? And I'm trying to make sure the sky's coming with me before I start hitting down through my sitting bones and feet. Then I'm going to lift back up with my spine, right? The sky's in my feet. And my center core is moving back towards the sky. And I'm just using words. I don't know if it's sky. I do not know. Good. And then come on back to center. Words are really hard. Okay. Uh, fingertips. I like to tickle. Like, could I tickle the sky? Does it make me happy when I tickle the sky? Right? But then can I bring it with me? Down. Once I turn and pivot, I fall too fast to the earth, so I'm going to do it again. Because I want to keep the sky mixing with the earth, not just collapsing to the earth. There. Okay, so I did it better that time. Then as I'm bringing the sky down, I'm gonna start going up with my spine. Inhale, lift up, exhale, revolve. Good, and then come on back to center. So as I lean forward now, <laughs> damn it. So now I'm hearing all these instructions in my head that I've had for 31 years from my teacher, right? And I'm seeing why maybe they would have been uttered, okay? When she told me not to exclude my skin, she goes, Matt, you're not letting your scalp be part of your poses. Remember I said that in class before? That meant I wasn't having the sky with me. And I can feel it now. By softening the top of my head, by letting it have air, because I'm not gripped. I was actually cutting off from what was above. It's like, oh, okay. So in order to have the expanse, I'm gonna soften the skin on my scalp. These damn yogis drive me crazy. They knew what they were talking about. So now from that kind of my scalp included, by the way, my scalp itches a lot, especially in the winter. It's probably why I turn it off, right? I'm going to, from the space way above me, I'm going to come forward. 
So now instead of moving your arms to bring the space above you, you're trying to do it with your head, not with your thoughts. And then back. Your thoughts can't do it. The skin on your scalp can. Come forward again, bring everything with you. Okay, here's me knowing yoga, okay? I can already tell that if I wanna bring my scalp with me, if I wanna touch all the space up here, soften my scalp and come forward, it's gonna help if I gently lift my chest because it's gonna keep me connected on all the layers that allow me to come forward. Try it again. Remember, I'm trying to teach you the sensation of when something becomes yogic, not what the yoga poses are. And okay, so I'm gonna release my scalp down. I can feel all the places where they put screws into my head. They, they, they are the ones that itch and hurt the most. So there's a reason why I don't listen there. My brain has learned how not to listen. Let that input to my mind make sense. It was protecting me, right? So, okay. So right now I'm in multiple planes of time right now, right? Because I'm beginning to feel what happened before. My body's holding it. So it's like, huh, okay. There's a reason why I've resisted this type of awareness, right? So that's so why you can work it on stuff in asana. You don't have to put your face in it all the way. Okay, so I'm gonna like soften my scalp. I'm gonna feel the whole room through the touchstone of softening my scalp, okay? I'm gonna come forward to bring it, things down to the earth, but I'm gonna keep the space between my shoulder blades light and lifted. Now, once I get that to the earth, I'm gonna switch my position so I'm more grounded on my lap. Then I'm gonna activate like something growing out of the dirt. I'm gonna lift up. Oh my God, I have the beginning of upward facing dog in a way that doesn't just grow out of the earth against gravity. I've got an upward facing dog that's already connected to the lightness of air. I'm gonna try it again. Right? So we're trying to change the habit direction. So you can realize more air in what seems like just a willful pose. So I'm gonna like open up my scalp again, try to get connected to the whole room in a way that includes my head. Maybe your head's already included in the air, I'm not sure, mine isn't. Okay, so I'm gonna now watch that, keep my chest lifted so I keep connected to the air from the center of my chest, come forward, lean onto my legs, ground from the back of my eyes and deep within the cave of my mouth, I'm staying connected to the air above me and behind me. I'm gonna ground down my forearms onto the bones, my bone and my forearm to the bone of my legs, which is more earth, and I'm gonna lift all of it through the center of my chest. All of it, upward facing dog. And then release. The problem with doing this is I feel a little bit too serious. So before we end here, I'm gonna go sky fast. I'm gonna back bend up and over, have all the air, yay air, you know, yay space. But then I'm gonna take that and go down through my base. And as I do, I'm gonna open the, once I get the open and then down, I'm gonna open the hood of my chest even more, like extending out through the wrist better. And then release. So remember, when our hands were on the table, right? And I told you to start to drop up into your shoulders and then use that to extend your wrists, okay? We're doing it here with the back bend, okay? So back up, 
here, all the happy space, all the sunlight, all the stuff that comes with the back bend. Gonna keep it all. And then I'm gonna go down the other way towards my feet to open the chest even more. Oh, of course, if I broaden across my collarbones, I find the earth and I touch more sky. Good, and then slowly uncoil. So don't get caught up. I'm using earth and sky because I don't know what words to use, right? They're just words trying to point to something, right? I'm just twisting gently so I can start heading more groundedly to Shavasana, right? And then up, over, this way. I'm backing out of the room because I feel like I've traveled some weird directions now. I'm coming back to my habit, hands on the table, to symmetry. I'm using the habits of what I know. I can tell you that it's too taxing for me to practice this way too often. I can already feel that now. It was freedom. I liked it, it was revealing, but I can feel the price right now. It's not exactly fatigue, it's something else. Hmm. Good, and then release. Let your practice be your measure, right? So like I can tell that that was fun, it was weird, <clears throat> but I kind of like the way I practice from the center outward more. But I'm gonna sit here and try to let Shavasana travel from outside to in. So usually I tell you to ground and you know, let the lightness come. Let the, the streaks or the lines come into your grounding from outside. <clears throat> So I'm doing that here for a second. Trying to let the sky come down. And then I'm gonna feel my chair. Then just cause I don't wanna have it just coming down at me, I'm gonna gently lift my chest just a tiny bit. So my old Shavasana is here too. Where the support makes me expand. Lips together, teeth slightly apart. Relax around the temples. Space between the skin on the forehead and your forehead. Space behind in your cheeks. Relax your belly to relax your throat.
Feel your breath. Don't change it. Thank your body. Thank it again. Start to bring yourself back slightly deeper inhalation, slightly longer exhalation. When you're ready, open your eyes. Close them if you want to, and then open again. So this whole, this one practice we just did kind of trying to reverse direction, you know? Um, so one of the best acoustic guitar riffs I've ever encountered is the beginning of Wish You Were Here by Pink Floyd, okay? And before the strumming actually happens, there's a, like things getting brought into a vacuum, right? If, and if you don't know the song I'm talking about, like go listen to the beginning of Wish You Were Here. And then the singular acoustic guitar starts to bloom outward after things have been brought in like this. And then it starts the movement out, right? <clears throat> and some of you have, that have been training with me long enough know that I refer to this song often. Not often, but I have, you probably heard me talk about it before. And if you haven't, you haven't been listening, right? I know that when I heard that sound after having been practiced for a long time, or long enough, I realized that there was an insight about asana there, right? That I didn't, I don't, didn't know, and still don't fully know how to articulate. Although I teach from the center outward most of the time, I know I need not to get too trapped by the habit because there's this other part that I can't do very often that brings things in before it goes out, right? And that's what basically inspired this today, right? And if it, if it didn't, you didn't like it, don't do it again. It's your practice, right? It gets to be your practice. All right, everybody. A new year, watch your habits, letting there be change. Namaste, <clears throat> spirit in me bows the spirit in you. And I can tell if I practice that way, I would lose grounding. This would not be a good way for me to practice every time. That's for me, right? I need the grounding from the center outward to be the foundation or pillars of my exploration, right? But it doesn't mean there aren't other stories. There are. All right, have a good, have a good year.